Welcome to the Caesar Cipher Brute Force Learning Module. This video demonstrates the features and how to use the Caesar Brute Force Learning Module. You can download the program from https colon forward slash forward slash bitbucket.org forward slash search. Search for Caesar Brute, that's C A E. SAR-BRUTE to download the files. The Caesar Brute Force Learning Module requires Python 3.2 or higher be installed on your machine to run. This learning module will introduce you to a simple substitution cipher and the brute force cryptanalysis technique. The Caesar Cipher Brute Force Lab consists of a number of components. The first component is the ciphertext box. This is where the ciphertext is placed that you want to try and decrypt. It comes with an initial ciphertext installed. Below the ciphertext box is the plain text box. This is where the attempt to decrypt the ciphertext will go and additional information will be supplied with each attempt as you will see in just a moment. On the right we have the keys. There are a button for each shift left. So button one means we're going to shift our Caesar cipher alphabet one character to the left. Button two means we're going to do it two characters to the left. We have 25 potential shifts. There are actually 26 possible shifts, but if we shifted the alphabet 26 characters to the left, we would wind up with A substituting for A, B for B, etc. Therefore, the plain text and cipher text would be the same, and a cipher text would not disguise the message in any way. Below the shift buttons, we have a copy button. This allows you to copy the context content of the plain text box to the clipboard from which you can paste it into a report, a file, or anything else you'd like. The reset button will restore the screen to its initial configuration. The clear button will clear both the ciphertext and plain text box, enabling you to install your own ciphertext and try the lab again. The help button displays a help screen which describes each of the components and how they work. You can click on the help screen in the upper left X, upper right X, to close the box. If I choose a shift left one, I get a standard result for this lab, which consists of, it tells me what key, we use, which was a shift left one. It shows me the shifted alphabet that was used for the substitution. So in this case you can see the letter B would appear under A in the normal alphabet. The letter A was shifted all the way to the end of the alphabet and would appear under the letter Z. So C would appear under B, D would appear under C, etc. You have a blank line and below the blank line is the attempted decryption of the message. If the attempted decryption of the message looks scrambled, as this one does, you know that that was not the correct guess. A brute force cryptanalysis attack always works because you can try all potential keys that are available and you know one of the potential keys had to have been used to encrypt the message. In modern cryptography, though, there are so many potential keys that you would not have the resources or time necessary to decrypt the message. A modern cipher could take a hundred times the life of the universe if every man, woman, and child on earth was working on it continuously before you would discover the correct key. But the Caesar cipher was invented over 2,000 years ago by Julius Caesar. 
So it's a very simple form and an excellent way to demonstrate brute force cryptanalysis since there are only 25 potential guesses and even manually this can be done in a very short period of time. So what I do is I just start picking various guesses. Now I'm going to pick a shift of 20. So again, it gives me the key shift, it gives me the shifted alphabet, and it gives me my guess. My guess again is unintelligible, so I know 20 is not the correct answer. I'll pick another shift, 10. Now when I pick 10, it doesn't appear on the screen. All that means is you have to scroll down and you will see it. And just as you saw the other ones, you see the guess of 10. Note at this point too, that after I guess 10, 20, and 1, the buttons are grayed, which means they're disabled. You can press them, but it won't record that guess again. This keeps your plain text box organized and clean without duplicate guesses, and it saves you the effort and time if you get confused of making multiple guesses that are the same. Now with a brute force attack, mathematically it can be shown that once you've guessed more than half of the potential guesses, each guess has a higher probability of being right than the previous guess. Up until halfway, you have less than or equal to uh, potential of guessing right and guessing wrong. After the middle guess, all the guesses have a higher potential of being right. So it's most likely you will guess the correct key somewhere between your 13th and 25th guesses. And let's just pick another one at random. I'm going to pick 15. Now I have to scroll down to see my full guess. And now we can see, if I put spaces in, that I have a human readable solution. The beginning is the most important part of the work, Plato. At this point, I can hit the copy key to copy the message to the clipboard. I could hit the clear key, and that would clear both the plain text and ciphertext box, as I said before, allowing you to cut and paste your own ciphertext in and try the lab again. Or you can hit the reset button, which will restore the lab to its initial configuration, and you can try guessing again. This concludes the demonstration of the Caesar Cipher Brute Force Learning Module. Thank you.